Pleasure to meet you. I'm Matt, and I possibly ruined your life by rejecting your college application. You probably have a lot of questions. Oh, uh, just one, actually. What object here can I use to hit you with? Look, I get it. Not getting into your dream college is sort of like sending a massive, heartfelt love letter to your celebrity crush, only to receive a year-long restraining order in response. It can be a humiliating and frustrating experience, but if you give me a chance, I'd like to explain why I rejected your application. Universities love to give the impression that the review of your application is some exact science. The reality is anything but that. There's a ton of interesting psychology behind admissions review, similar to judicial leniency in the criminal justice system. Oh, uh, you mean like how judges are more likely to be lenient immediately after lunch and least lenient just before? Oh, and also how if Judge Judy and Judge Dredd had a baby, all crime would be stopped? Exactly, to the first part. It's the same with college. The reviewer's mood, internal biases, and all sorts of arbitrary and unknowable factors come into play. It's a human and thus imperfect process almost entirely outside of your control. A former admissions officer at an elite Northeastern college admitted that he once failed all the applicants from the city of Buffalo because he'd recently gotten food poisoning at a restaurant there. He admitted he'd be more critical of applicants if his favorite football team had recently suffered a loss. Even if we're not being petty, I honestly can't say I'm able to give you more than a few minutes of my time. I average 10 to 12 applications an hour. These are quick reads, not intended for analysis or feedback, like an AP English paper. Five minutes to determine my entire future? Ugh, I should have gotten more creative with that application. Everyone said, just send it in on regular paper. Don't fold it into an erotic origami diorama showing Judge Judy and Judge Dredd doing it. I knew I should have gone with my instinct. Yeah, about that. A lot of applicants send whole loads of completely irrelevant stuff that we never have time to read. Like the guy who sent in every certificate he'd ever received since kindergarten. There was literally a certificate for good finger painting in there. He was applying for a master's degree. Another student detailed the contents of his grandmother's poop in his application. He included it as proof that his grandma was sick in the hope of getting special dispensation for bad high school grades. We just passed it around the office after washing our hands. So what are colleges looking for in applications because I actually already included several diagrams of my grandpa's poop in that stack and they are detailed and graphic. Please know, what we really want to see is authenticity. But even then, remember, we're a school and not your therapist. Though we probably charge similar hourly rates. Sometimes students write about things they have never told anyone else. Living with hoarders, suffering sexual abuse from a family member, suicide attempts, watching their father shoot themselves, cheating on their significant other, drug use, being attracted to a teacher, you name it. They're probably just searching for an outlet for their pent up emotions. And I genuinely empathize with that. But none of that will make me more or less likely to reject your application. With one possible exception. I swear to God though, if you mention Judge Judy and Judge Dredd doing it and or your grandpa's shit, I'm calling security. If you're, say, a kid struggling with depression because your small town is dying and there are no jobs around, or if you're a trans man transitioning at an all-girls private school and you're still performing at a high level academically and socially, a person like that sounds like someone who might actually have the strength, the fortitude, the indomitable superhuman willpower to actually show up to an 8 a.m. class. A.m.? Uh, would you be willing to reconsider that 8 a.m. time slot for my good friend B Abraham Lincoln and the Washington Twins? Again, let me stop you right there. You can't buy your way into a top university. Let me clarify, you can't buy your way into a top university by bribing me. You're gonna have to talk to someone higher up and buy the school a new building for that kind of quid pro quo. Yet people still waste their time by throwing cash and camels at me. Camels? Like camels camels? Yeah, a colleague of mine was, incredibly, once offered 10 white camels if this one guy's son was let in. Man, I've never been to a camel meat barbecue. We declined. Most of the time though, I just deal with parents asking if my decision would change if they made a school donation. It wouldn't. Although one time, a guy whose daughter was rejected just straight up asked how much he should pay me to get her in. To his credit, at least he didn't try to prostitute his kid to me. 
Once, I received a call from a high-level professional calling on behalf of a family friend's daughter. In addition to ensuring me she's intelligent and a great student, he spent a considerable amount of time talking about how attractive and beautiful she is. That's as far as the conversation went, but the implication was super clear and super uncomfortable. Ugh, fine. You don't look anything like Judge Judy or Judge Dredd anyway. Oh, and just one more thing before you leave. Your college application did not get rejected because a person of color or a woman stole your spot. That is simply not a thing. But in 2008, Abigail Fisher applied to the University of Texas, but was rejected due to, and I'm slightly paraphrasing her here, being whiter than a camel. In her subsequent lawsuit against the school, Fisher alleged that she was denied entry to UT because of their affirmative action policy, which dictates that the school must admit a certain number of minority candidates, even if they're less qualified than the white students. Fisher eventually took her case to the Supreme Court, where she lost, probably because her description of affirmative action is total camel shit. All right, so what exactly is affirmative action then? Affirmative action is a broadly defined policy of making good faith efforts to attract applications from qualified minorities and women. In its most basic form, it can mean simply letting people in minority neighborhoods know that the school exists and that they can get scholarships to attend it. That's it. There haven't been college minority quotas since the late 70s, thanks to the Regents of University of California v. Baki case. And you can't award admission points based on race thanks to the 2003 case of Gratz v. Bollinger. You also definitely can't admit underqualified applicants above their more qualified white peers thanks to the 1996 case of Hopwood v. State. Unfortunately, if you suck, you'll almost certainly lose out to a candidate who does not suck, regardless of race, gender, or camel having. Okay, well now you're just being prejudiced against Americans who suck, and I'll have you know that I come from a long line of Americans who suck. In fact, we immigrated from some sucky island like, like 300 years ago, okay? And I didn't choose this, okay? You know, I just, just because I suck doesn't mean I shouldn't get to go to whatever college I want and for free and, and, you know... Suck while we